أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون My dear viewers everywhere السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last night we talked about the benefits that an observing Muslim will earn from fasting and we finished with the health related benefits or the medical benefits today or tonight we are continuing with the same subject the medical benefits that an observing Muslim will hopefully receive by observing fasting now these medical benefits that I will be narrating have been studied not by Muslim scholars rather by scientists and those are considered to be evidence-based findings in secular institutes such as universities and mostly reported by American and European universities that have nothing to do with observing fasting of Muslims now when they call fasting they call it under the name of alternative fasting or intermittent fasting where the person under the study fasts one day and break his fasting on the other day based on those they have found multiple findings I will be narrating a few of those benefits and then I will allude to its source before we talk about the medical benefits we need to understand the kind of foods that we eat our food consists of the following the carbohydrates which include sugars and, and starch and the proteins which are in the form of red and white meats and fish and fats that are in the form of whipping cream for example and then there are hormones and minerals and uh, liquids in the form of water or other fluids these constitute the food that we take daily now when we look at the whole picture we see that sugars degrade faster to produce energy we need energy the reason of taking food has multiple reasons one of them is to produce energy second is to build the material the storage material in our body and third is the body goes through metabolism and regulations so when we need energy the first thing that get degraded is the glucose it is easier than any other form of food while others are stored so the first benefit that we receive from fasting is that fasting combats obesity because when we observe fasting the first thing that happens in our body is that a hormone called insulin that makes sure sequester the glucose in our body and send them to the cells for degradation and a production of energy that hormone level drops considerably therefore glucose will stop being used as a source of energy rather the, the fats the lipids and the proteins that are piled in our body especially the belly fats they will be used for production of energy now this is coupled with a hormone that is called human growth hormone or HGH now this hormones allows faster rate of metabolism of our body this will increase in five fold the metabolism in our body will increase up to five fold upon fasting now fasting will do 
two or three jobs simultaneously. Number one, when we stop eating anything, we will stop taking up any food, we have restricted the amount of calories that get in our bodies. Now, calorie is the containment of energy. Now, when we stop eating, the number or the amount of calorie have been restricted in getting into our bodies. On the other hand, when hormone of the growth hormone in the body starts to kick in and start to work, it will consume more and more of the calories. So fasting does two things at the same time. Number one, it reduces the intake of the glucose and sugars in the body. And second, it consumes them faster in the body in addition to the fats and the proteins. That's why it is considered that fasting fights obesity. Now, based on a study in Aberdeen, Scotland, University of Aberdeen, Scotland, the study that it says fasting of weight for weight loss, an effective strategy or latest dieting trend has been published May 2015 in International Journal of Obesity. This is the first benefit of fasting. The second medical benefit of fasting, as I have discussed it, is the human growth hormone. Your human growth hormone allows the cellular processes be expedited and the growth of a human takes place. Now, this human growth hormone has been witnessed that the maximum of activity of this, this hormone reaches during the time of fasting or stoppage from food intake by five folds. The more activity of the human growth hormone, the faster the combustion of the calories and reduction of the, of the um, waste materials or, or, or um, um, lipids and fats. And therefore, we will end up losing many of those storage materials that if they stay in the body, they cause danger and hazard. Again, this has been described in a paper that is called the Journal of a Clinical Investigation, a paper under the title of Fasting Enhances Growth Hormone Secretion and Amplifies the Complex Rhythms of a Growth Hormone Secretion in Man. It has been studied in the Department of Internal Medicine University of Virginia Medical School and it has been published in April 1988. The third medical benefit of fasting is a process that is called autophagy. Autophagy ensures that the waste material in our cells have been sequestered and taken away. Assume you are building a home. You're building, uh, constructing a building. Now, at the end of the construction, you will end up seeing piles of waste materials. You will see bricks, you will see woods, you see piece of irons, you will see steel, you see cements and things like that that have been not used or have been left over. These are considered to be waste materials and you need to get rid of them. You bring a shuffle, you bring a truck, and you load the truck with those waste material and throw them in the dumpster. The same thing in our body. When the cells perform their duty in making proteins, hormones, and other things, we will end up having waste material in those cells. Now, if those waste material stay in the, cell lo in, in the cells longer, they cause trouble. They cause autoimmune disease, they cause inflammation and other patho pathologies. Therefore, the body is equipped with a process, that, a, a cellular repair process that is called autophagy. Now, autophagy takes all of those waste materials 
and dump them out of the cell into the waste. The studies have shown that this process, autophagy, becomes expedited and increases in multiple folds when we are under the state of fasting. Again, fasting helps the cellular, important cellular process that help us to secure our bodies from inflammations and from autoimmune diseases. Again, this has been under a study in the Journal of Autophagy, where the title says, Short-Term Fasting Induces a Profound Neural, neural auto, Autophagy. And this is, has been done by the very well-known Scripps Research Institute at La Jolla, La Jolla, California, and that was done in August of 2010. So this is the third medical benefit of fasting. The fourth medical benefit of fasting is that it combats aging and chronic diseases. As we age, the reason some scholars and some, some scientists say that the reason we age is because of a cellular process that generates a free radicals. Those free radicals are very reactive molecules that bind with DNA and protein and RNA and destroy them inside the cell. When these DNAs and proteins get destroyed, they will shorten the lifespan of the cell. Hence, our lifespan also will be shortened. The more we get rid of these free radicals in the cells, the longer and the, the longer our life will be and the healthier our state of body will be. Now, studies have shown that during fasting, the free radical number in our body will be shortened. Fasting, intermittent fasting, will combat the free radical formation in our bodies. Again, the study for this has been done by a research which has been published in Biomed Research International in 2014, where it says oxidative stress or preoxidants and antioxidants, the interplay, where they speak about the benefit of fasting in combating the oxidative stress. The fifth and last medical benefit is that intermittent fasting helps combat cancer. Nowadays, cancer is very common everywhere. The lethality of cancer is that it produces tumors that they grow in an exponential order out of ordinary, without any limits. The cell growth, will, will, which leads to tumor growth, causes cancer patient to die. Now, under fasting, the normal, cell, the normal cells go through hibernation. They stop activating. They stop the activity and go into sleep. However, the cancerous cells keep dividing and proliferating. Now, under fasting, the food becomes scarce. Those cells will end up destroying themselves by eating the components of themselves, the components of the cells. They eat up the components of the cells, like the DNA and protein, to use them for their multiplications. Therefore, they cause self-destruction or under the medical term called cellular suicide. They commit suicide. Now, studies have shown that those who are under fasting, when they commit fasting, they, better, they have better chances to combat cancer. Cancer such as breast cancer, brain cancer, and skin cancer. And finally, the study for that has been published in the Journal of Current Opinion Oncology, where the title says Metabolic Regulation of Sirtuins Upon Fasting and the, and, the and the Implication for Cancer. 
These are the benefits of fasting. When we pay attention closely, we see that the Prophet, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago, have said this elegant statement where he has said, Sumu tasahu. If you observe fasting, you will be healthy. يا صانع كل مصنوع يا خالق كل مخلوق يا رازق كل مرزوق يا مالك كل مملوك يا كاشف كل مكروب يا فارج كل مهموم يا راحم كل مرحوم يا ناصر كل مخذول يا ساتر كل معيوب يا ملجأ كل مطرود سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا عدتي عند شدتي يا رجائي عند مصيبتي يا مونسي عند وحشتي يا صاحبي عند غربتي يا ولي عند نعمتي يا غياثي عند كربتي يا دليلي عند حيرتي يا غنائي عند افتقاري يا ملجئي عند اضطراري يا معيني عند مفزعي سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا علام الغيوب يا غفار الذنوب يا ستار العيوب يا كاشف الكروب يا مقلب القلوب يا طبيب القلوب يا منور القلوب يا أنيس القلوب يا مفرج الهموم يا منفس الغموم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back again with the beautiful words of Dua Joshan Al Kabir. Segment number 10. The theme of the segment is to get conduct approved and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where it says, Ya Sani'a kulli masnu' Ya Khaliqa kulli makhluk, Ya Raziqa kulli marzuq, Ya Malika kulli mamluk, Ya Kashifa kulli makroob, Ya Farija kulli mahmoom, يا راحم كل مرحوم يا ناصر كل مخذول يا ساتر كل معيوب يا ملجأ كل مطرود O oh, the fashioner of every fashion thing the creator of every created things the provider for every needy things the sovereign of over all subject dispeller of every hardship 
comforter of every griefer, merciful to every sufferer, helper of everything forsaken, concealer of every blemished thing, shelter for every exile. I would like to talk a little bit about the word Ya Sani'a Kulli Masnu'a The fashioner or in today's world, world the manufacturer of every manufactured the fashioner of every fashioned the creator of every created we have many entities that create things manufacture things the tailor for example makes nice suits and nice dresses but is he really the creator of those things meaning that he create the fabric and he creates the thread and he creates the little sewing machine to do the sewing for this tailored dress or those are already made and he's the one who piece all of those together and bring them together i will give you an example the manufacturer of a car of an automobile does they do they manufacture every part of the automobile how many parts are in a single automobile it is stated that there are more than 30,000 parts to a single automobile taken from the external body to the interior to the engine to the back to the seats to the windows to the steering to the pedals, to the radiators, to the glass, to the window, to the seats, to the dashboard. These are more than 30,000 pieces and parts from all nuts and bolts, to the big engines, to the radiators, to all mechanical and electrical work network of the automobile. Those more than 30,000 pieces are made by whom? all by a single manufacturer or they change from one manufacturer to another for example Boeing the airplane manufacturer they borrow their engine from a company called Rolls-Royce so the Rolls-Royce will make the engine and sell it to Boeing and Boeing use it for their carriers so those are not in reality are considered to be the creator of the created but look at the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he creates something does he need the assistance of others for example when he create us when he create the plants the trees imagine those tall rising trees go to Redwood in California and look at the 40 foot 50 foot trees they are made of from what a single seed that seed itself did everything all parts of those tall trees are made from that little seed God doesn't need to bring so many parts together the same thing the same seed has everything to develop look at the creation of man when we are conceived in the womb of our mothers how we grow and how we be were born and how we become adults look at the beautiful narratives that the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives he says وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ We created insan, human, out of clay, piece of clay. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ We made him a seed inside a resting womb. ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً Then we made him a lump of a flesh. فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةً A clot. Then from clot, we made a lump of flesh. Then فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامًا Then we created bone out of this lump فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمًا Then eventually we covered those bones with tissues, muscles and flesh. Then it says ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر. This is the creation of a human being. A human being that has more than 3 billion cells. The 3 billion cells that we do have in our bodies are created only from a single seed. We didn't need to have, God didn't need to have so many parts to get together and assembled 
to create a human being. Therefore, God is the creator. He's the manufacturer, but he's totally different from the rest of the manufacturer. The next segment is segment number 11, which is to avoid evil and gain prosperity and to be relieved from calamity. This is the theme of segment number 11, where it says, Ya Uddati, Ya Uddati, Anda Shiddati, Wa Ya Rajai, Anda Musibati, Wa Ya Mu'nisi, Anda Wahshati, Wa Ya Sahibi, Anda Ghurbati, Wa Ya Waliyi, Anda Na'mati, Ya Ghiyati, Anda Kurbati, Wa Ya Dalili, Anda Hayrati, Ya Ghinai, عند افتقاري يا ملجئي عند اضطراري ويا معيني عند مفزعي The words, the beautiful words that says يا عدتي عند شدتي Ammunition When you face an enemy When you're in a hard position A difficult position That you are surrounded by enemies Number one thing that you think of Is the munition Two things that people always keep in mind if they are against an external threat, they think of weapons and munitions. And second, they think about money and wealth. These are considered to be udda, something that you can rely on in order to protect yourself and survive. Those beautiful words of dua says that my ammunition, my wealth in my desperate times and desperate positions is my Lord. Ya uddati. عند شدتي. Then it says ويا رجائي عند مصيبتي. رجاء hope. My hope in my calamity, in my misery. Where do we have our miseries? On the last day of our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to that day as the day of مصيبه. The miserable day. The misery. Misery is associated with death. Because the Almighty says in the Quran, in the Holy Quran, it says, فَإِنْ أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ الْمَوْتِ refers to death as a misery of, the, of death. Therefore, the Prophet saying in this prayers that you are my hope on the day of my misery. When I am completely disconnected from everything, it is narrated when we are brought to the grave and put in the grave, the call comes from the Lord, where it says, Abdi Raja'u wa Tarakuk, wa fit Turabi Dafanuk, Walaw Dallu Ma'akamana Fa'uk. Oh my servant, they abandoned you, they left you, they dug the earth and put you in earth, they covered you with earth, and even if they had to stay with you they wouldn't have benefited you. مَا نَفَعُوكَ وَلَمْ يَبْقَ لَكَ إِلَّا أَنَا The only thing that is left to you is myself. وَأَنَا الْحَيُّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ Therefore, the only hope we have is our Lord. That is during the time of our misery. Be on your guard against falsehood because it is contrary to faith. A truthful person is on the height of salvation and dignity, while the liar is on the edge of ignominy and degradation. Do not be jealous because jealousy eats away faith just as fire eats away dried wood. Do not bear malice because it's a scrapper of virtues. And know that desires make wit forgetful and make memory oblivious. You should falsify desire because it is a deception. And he who has desires is in deceit.